Jesus' dealings testify that Jesus is alive. The Bible says when you have that firm conviction in your heart that Jesus is alive, you will set your affections on things above. Amen. Does your budget testify that Jesus is alive? Amen. Your spending habits, do they testify that Jesus is alive? Because you see, when Jesus really lives within your heart, he changes everything. Songwriter says the things I used to do, I do them no more. The places I used to go, I don't go there anymore. But someone still goes back to those old places. That simply means that Jesus is still in the tomb. It makes a big difference whether you think someone is dead or alive. Paul is writing a letter to the church in Colossae, a church that he had never been to. A church that he had never started. In fact, the person who started this church was Epaphras. So Epaphras comes to Paul and he tells them, and he tells Paul a lot about what's going on in the church in Colossae. We don't know a whole lot about this church, except that there were many very real struggles. So Paul tells them that Jesus is superior, that Jesus is better than the philosophies that are there. It's Christ and not philosophy. And the message that is coming to us today is still the very same thing. That is Jesus and not education. You know, we live in a society where people are so obsessed with getting the next higher qualification. Everyone is so enamored with their education, but Paul says at the heart of your life is not a quest for education, but a quest for Jesus. Amen. So he says, Christ needs to come first. Set your affections on things above. Amen. You see, it's Jesus and not a promotion. Your life may be so obsessed with it. I need a better job. I need more money. Our society today has replaced the God of the universe with another God that's in the world. We serve and pay homage to those little green notes as if that's the most important thing in the world. But Paul says, set your affections on things above. Paul wants our investment to be not in this world, but to be in a world that will never pass by. Need I remind you that the things of earth will dim and lose their value. Need I remind you that the treasures that are stored up in this world will lose their value. They will gather dust. Do you need to be reminded, living in an economy such as ours, that money loses value? Now the beauty with the Zimbabwe situation is we get an accelerated view to what happens to money anyway. We, we, we just saw it happening with the bond note. It just happened much faster with our currency. But all money loses value. But lay up your treasure in a place which will never lose value. You see, when God calls us to give, when God asks us to give to Him, it's not because God suddenly has lack. I, I remember one time, I, 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 as a child, I grew up in Lue. I remember growing up, uh, one time, I decided to extend courtesy to someone who was elderly. I went to greet, and in my naive ignorance, I asked them, how are you? And did I get the scolding of my life? That, who are you to ask me how I am? Now, when, when you go to Matabella, you don't ask an older person how they are. Because the thinking is, if you ask me how I am, what are you going to do? If, you, if I tell you that I'm sick, can you heal me? If I tell you that I'm hungry, can you bring me food? So you don't ask me how I am. I, the elder, ask you how you are. And you know, God says, if I'm hungry, then I'm going to come and have a conversation with you that, that there's no bread 
in my house. I started eating bread. Could you hook me up? With... God doesn't come to a human being to satisfy his hunger. God doesn't need human beings to pay for his work to go forward. God has cattle on a thousand hills. Let's still count to your cattle by number. God is counting his by hill. When you get to that level that God says you can come and have a conversation with me about funding, God hasn't gone broke. God doesn't need a budget for his mission. In fact, we've got examples in the Bible of times when God does evangelism without any offerings being collected. In fact, the person who decided to pay and fund the campaign was the devil himself. Story of Nebuchadnezzar. He goes out to Jerusalem and he brings some evangelists into Babylon, the capital city. He trains them in his schools, gives them his food, and they eat. Yeah. And one day, Nebuchadnezzar sends out invitations. Yeah. Say, God is about to do something grand. I have set up an image, and Nebuchadnezzar calls the people yeah. to this place where God is about to do his work. The Bible tells us that Nebuchadnezzar lights up a fire and he tells everyone to bow. And his idea was, when I've done this, everyone should leave. I'm talking about how great this image is that I have set up. Mm -hmm. But these three boys, we just decided to stand when everyone else bowed. And suddenly, the focus of attention shifts. In fact, the image that Nebuchadnezzar set up was a grand image, nine stories high, huge image. But no one is talking about how beautiful this image is. Everyone is talking about who are those three who dared to stand, who dared defy the king. Everyone is talking about three boys. Instead of talking about the image, everyone is talking about three slaves caught captive. God was doing his thing. How much money was spent there? What budget was put in? What call did God do? Simply God doing his work using enemy funding. And something grand happened. At the place, the, 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 the three boys are thrown into the fire. When they are in the fire, then evangelism takes place. Because Nebuchadnezzar becomes the preacher, Nebuchadnezzar, does the outer court. He says, I threw three people in, but I see a fourth man in the fire. That is the Son of God. And there, people see Jesus. The conversation shifts. Everybody is talking about a Jesus who keeps people in the fire. So, if you think that God needs your two dollars, to, to evangelize, God needs your money to take his work forward. You are horribly mistaken. The issue is not about your money, but God is saying, set your affection on things above. So God says, give me your money, because I know when your money comes, your heart will follow. You don't believe me? Remember the last time I bought a few coats? Uh, I, I, I remember it clearly. You, you put them in the pan and every day you wake up early in the morning. You just go check. Are these goats okay? Is, is, is everything going on all right? You, 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 you sweep the, the crow clean. Make sure you put in everything. If, if you're told by the vet you need to get five vaccinations, you're in the store buying all those vaccines. Because where your treasure is, there your heart will be also, when God is asking for your money, it's not because he needs money, but God needs hearts. So God says, set your affections on things about. You see, if you find yourself still, still being held up by the things of this world, simply because you haven't gotten a vision of another world. Paul says, I caught a vision of this world, whether it was in the spirit or in the flesh, I don't know. But what I know is I've seen a better world, and I can testify that the eye has not seen, the ear has not heard what God has in store for his people. What that simply means is I could begin to describe heaven, but 
But immediately after that, I need to pray and ask God for forgiveness because I've lied to the saints. Because mm -hmm. I've got no idea. Mm -hmm. Even if I do see it, my words cannot express what is there. Mm -hmm. All you need to do is see it for yourself. When you catch a vision of things above the things of earth, will lose their value. Mm -hmm. So God is saying to us today, set your affections on things above. Amen. Your heart needs to move to the kingdom of heaven. You need to move your investment bank yeah. from the bank that is down here. You need to move your funds yeah. from these banks that will change currency overnight and put them in an account where they will never lose value. An account where you will walk on streets of gold. Lay up your treasure in heaven. That is the call of heaven to each of us. To set our affections on things above. God wants our lives to be completely transformed by his grace. God wants our focus to shift from the things of this earth to a higher ground. God wants us to keep pressing on that upward way. God's desire is that our minds should be focused on that land. I don't know about you, but my heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fears dismay. But my prayer, my aim is higher ground. Lord, lift me up and help me to stand by faith on heaven's stable land. Help me to live on this earth as a citizen of that king. Amen. Even though I'm walking on the streets of Harari, I begin to live yes. like someone who is in heaven. Mm -hmm. So even though Satan's darts at me are hurled, I don't care because yeah. my focus is on that kingdom. Let them talk about me. Let them say that I'm too skinny. Let them say that I'm too dark. But my focus is on that kingdom. God is saying, let's live above the world. You know, people in the world have so many things that we are worried about, but our citizenship is in heaven. We are looking for the kingdom of heaven. We are looking forward to that day when God makes all things new. We are transformed people. That's why Paul writes in the book of Ephesians, that I'm sitting with God in heavenly places. Surprising where Paul was when he wrote the letter to Ephesus. He's actually in prison with the rats in a stinky dungeon, terrible experience, terrible circumstance. But Paul says, even though I'm here, but I'm sitting with God in heavenly places. Why? Because Paul's mind was on things above. Let's set our minds on things above. Let's begin to live with Christ even today. The question that I have for you, even as I close, is Jesus a dead or alive? Can somebody say that Jesus lives within my heart today? There's someone who says I want Jesus alive in my heart right here, right now. Is that your desire? I'm going to pray with you. If it's your desire, just raise your hand wherever you are as we pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your word that gives us an assurance that these troubles that we face today are not going to last always. Lord, we pray that you may help us to set our minds on things above. Lord, I pray that you may help us to have an investment account in a place where no moth, no wrath is ever going to destroy. Lord, I pray that you may help us to today in the streets of Malawi be living and sitting with Christ in heavenly places. We pray that Jesus may live in our hearts and minds today. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.